What's up guys, I'm Ozzy and you're watching Bottled and Bond. Welcome back to Wednesday Knowledge everyone. I'm so glad you came back to check out the channel and I'm also glad you came back to check out the reviews and welcome to a Wednesday Knowledge episode. This one's going to be pretty quick. I want to touch base on just a few little things that I've learned throughout this whole entire process. Some may know, some may not know, and the ones that do know may even know a whole lot more than what I know and I've picked up throughout the last few uh, months or so. What I want to talk about is charred barrels, a little bit of aging processes, infiltration processes, touch just the, the very top of the differences and just a little bit of info for you guys to take back with you today. So first I wanna talk about peated whiskey. This is a form of smoking of the whiskey. So instead of the aging process of a charred barrel or a toasted barrel, this is the other way of giving it that smoke flavor and that's peat. So peat is thousands of years of uh, aging vegetation, animal moss, uh, all combined into one and it almost clumps up after all these years and it makes the peat almost like a, a bog or a piece of wood or something clumpy. Some bogs are more woody while other peats are more watery. So eventually after letting it age for about two to three weeks, you'll, you'll, you'll get a pretty much a tough brick. And the peat is what usually gives the whiskey that smoky flavor. Now peat is measured by PPM, which is a phenyl, phenyl's part per million. Some typical peated whiskeys are island whiskeys, such as uh, Lafroy and uh, Ardbeg. A lot more that goes into the process, but just remember, peated whiskey is by no means any kind of bourbon whatsoever. You'll find it in other countries, and different regions are going to have different types of peated whiskey based off the different moss and animal and vegetation uh, on different lands. Now, let's talk about charcoal whiskey. Charcoal is what I'm referring to as the filtration of the whiskey itself. This is typically used in Tennessee. So Jack Daniels, Jack Daniels, usually what they do is they charcoal filter their whiskey. Now, there's two typical companies that do it two different ways, yet similar, and get a semi more or less different taste, but still filtered with the same products, all right? And that being Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels first, what they do is they'll pass their whiskey through a uh, charcoal filter filtration system, right? And it just passes through filter, filtering it, uh, removing you know all the other flavors and giving it a more fresh flavor. One thing I like about Jack is that it has a distinct, unique flavor that gives it that delicious, smoky, clean, fresh feeling to the whiskey flavor that it has. Unlike bourbon, a uh, little stronger, uh, more smoky, the charness, the oak, oakiness of it. Anyways, Dickles, uh, what they do is they'll pretty much sit the whiskey on the charcoal uh, for about, I think, a couple days, maybe even up to seven days, uh, if not more or less, and then afterwards, then they filter it through. So it's just a longer process. So clean. Anyways, now let's talk about aging. Aging whiskey in wood chips. You got many different types of oak chips, Frank, French oak, uh, that you can age it. So what some people like to do is they'll sit their distilled product and let it sit similar to what Dickles does with the carbon filtered, except now we're talking aging. And they'll get the specific type of chips that they want to age their whiskey in and they'll let it sit for two, three days, multiple weeks, who knows how long. And it just sits and gets that color and that aging and that, that delicious aroma of whatever type of chips you've used. What they sell in the stores is sometimes what's, what's popular nowadays is this product, it's almost like a spiral that you drop into the whiskey that you're aging, whatever bottle that you're putting it into. It could be a mason jar, it could be an actual uh, barrel that you're dropping the, uh, the spiral uh, wood chip in. And then that gives it that color almost instantly within a couple of days, you start seeing that color. But if the longer you age it, the more it's gonna get that uh, woody flavor and uh, that smoky flavor if this is a, you know, a charred or a, a toasted spiral. And the same thing applies to wood chips. Regardless of what kind of wood chips you're using, you can char them or toast them prior to to give it that smoky flavor, similar to a charred barrel or a toasted barrel and also the smoky flavor that you get from peated whiskey. It's just not gonna be the same because you're using peat as opposed to just aging it in a uh, charred barrel or charred chips. Speaking of charred barrels, 
and toasted barrels. So there's a little bit of difference and there's four different levels that we want to talk about when it comes to aging whiskey in charred or toasted barrels. First, let's talk about charred. Typically, some whiskey companies, they like to uh, advertise a seven level charred chart. So for example, Bowman Distilleries, from what I've learned, is usually their level is at about a three, 3.5 out of a seven level charred barrel. And what we're talking about is they, they compare the different staves that they, that they use for um, comparing the different levels. So the charred is itself goes by four levels typically though so let's say for example the first level they'll char that barrel for about maybe 15 seconds climbing onto the second level you're looking at 30 seconds the third level you're looking anywhere between 35 to 45 seconds and then the last level being the fourth one the most charred uh more or less about 55 seconds to maybe even a minute there's other companies that like to char their barrels a little bit more uh sometimes they even promote you know charring it for a certain amount of minutes but typically the four levels is just within seconds to minutes time frame. It just gets darker and darker and the darker you go, the, the, the more smokier uh, and, and flavorful, robust flavors you're gonna get. Typical companies usually like to char their barrels within a three to level four, so to the highest. Now there's a difference between charred and toasted. If you look here, the charredness of this stage right here, it's almost breaking apart. This was uh, gotten uh, from the uh, Bowman Distillery. If you look, it starts breaking apart in different areas the longer that it ages, which is why a lot of companies, specifically bourbon companies for the most part, what they like to do is once they filter everything out, once they age it, right, and then it comes out of the barrel and they're bottling, they'll first have to put it through this uh, device where what you're, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see all the different pieces because it's gonna come out, okay? As the whiskey sits there for longer and longer, it starts dipping straight into the wood and picking up those woody oak, flavors it's also going to start deteriorating all of these pieces right here so that's why you need to filter it afterwards maybe sometimes double and triple filtration to get rid of that um, charredness and all the uh what would seem kind of like a charcoal but it's actually burnt wood and if you look right here this will tell you what i was talking about earlier the line that you see here tells you for how many years this was aged for the most part in other words the longer it sits there four six ten years twelve years the longer you're gonna see this line, this line represents the whiskey, where it's set and how far into the wood it went in. The longer it went into the wood, the more amount of years that this was aged in, which means it picked up more of that oakiness flavor from the wood itself. Now speaking of toasted barrels, it's just a little bit different. This is a process where it, the barrels, instead of getting charged with straight flames, now they're just getting toasted. This gives the barrel a more brownish, malted kind of look to it. So the flavors are a little bit more smooth, more mellow, but still it's not just a regular oak cask to where you would make whiskey or anything else out of. This is legit, no BS, still toasted. So it's still gonna give it a little bit of a smoke, but like I said, more mellow. So that's just two different type of uh, charred or toasted barrels. There's many different ways of aging your whiskey. There's companies out there that sell two gallon, three gallon, five gallon barrels that you can use with different hole openings at the top for you to uh, put in your mixtures, your liquid, whether that be uh, just a regular distilled vodka or and they'll bring you know the bottles for you to put in there. That's the type that I have, a five gallon one. And the first time I aged whiskey in this five gallon barrel, what I did is I put about four or five bottles of vodka and then I put the actual chemicals in there to give it that flavor that whiskey flavor. And I let that age for about approximately six months to eight months, more or less. The result of that was I got a whiskey flavor similar to Johnny Walker Black Label. I wasn't too fond of it. Um, but there are other ways for you to distill the product. Uh, you can also put the, the actual spirit inside of these barrels and put what I spoke about before, which is the spiral wooden chips. You can put them in different flavors. You can experiment. Hell, you can even put two to four year whis whiskeys in there, uh, about four or five, let them age, throw in your own uh, products that you wanna get that flavor of, and then afterwards, you know, pour it. Just understand one thing, the smaller the barrel, the shorter time span that you're gonna spend aging this product. So the five gallon, what it specifies, I'm not, I'm not gonna back the company up on it, but what it specifies is that it'll age the product at four times the rate that you would on a regular barrel. So in other words, if you wanted to get 
a four year aged barrel on a five gallon, you would possibly age it for about one year. One year will give it that four year. But unfortunately, the bigger you go, uh, you're pretty much gonna have to age it for the regular time frame. So if you are aging whiskey in a regular size drum oak cask, you're pretty much gonna have to age it for at least two years to call it a bourbon. If you learned something today, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share this video. I'm still setting up the background. Um, I'm not gonna be done anytime soon, but uh, it, it's a work in progress. We got way more reviews coming. I got a couple whiskeys in mind. Uh, wanna review a single malt scotch here within the next couple weeks that I've been interested in. And I definitely still got a few more bourbons to review. So stay with me on our next few episodes. Make sure you don't miss any episodes. Tell your friends about it, tell your family about it. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Hit the little bell at the bottom so you get notified every time I post a video. I'm Ozzy. This is Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey, which is what? Charcoal filtered. And this is Bottled and Bond. Cheers. Cheers.